You're watching F1 2022 Technical Analysis, brought to you by Aramco. Last year, McLaren fought with Ferrari for third in the Constructors' Championship. McLaren eventually finished almost 50 points behind, but the two teams were closely matched across much of 2021, and McLaren was the one that managed to win a race thanks to Daniel Ricciardo's famous victory at Monza. Yet this season, Ferrari is fighting for the World Championship, while the best McLaren can realistically manage is leading the midfield in fourth in the standings. The gap to Ferrari after just nine races in 2022 is already a massive 163 points, and McLaren has, if anything, gone backwards relative to its midfield rivals. Both teams were sleeping giants working their way back to the front last year, so why has McLaren failed where Ferrari succeeded? And what does it mean for its aspirations of ending a World Championship drought that stretches all the way back to Lewis Hamilton's driver's title in 2008, in the near future? Last year, McLaren's pace across the season was, on average, almost identical to Ferrari's. For much of the season, McLaren was ahead, but the introduction of a hybrid upgrade in Charles Leclerc's car in Russia, which Carlos Sainz then got for the next race in Turkey, changed the balance of power. Ferrari outscored McLaren by 56 points across the final seven races, giving it a decisive win in the battle for third. In 2022, Ferrari is in a different league to McLaren. It has already racked up 228 points, 106 more than at the same point last year, while McLaren has stagnated in the midfield. It's still in fourth place, but this year it has scored 65 points compared to 141 at the same point in 2021, and it has slipped just behind Alpine on average pace. While Ferrari has been fighting it out with Red Bull for pole positions and victories, McLaren has been taking on Alfa Romeo, Haas, Alfa Tauri, and occasionally Mercedes in the mid-pack. Compared to last year's outright pace, Ferrari has leapt forward while McLaren has slipped back. This has turned a negligible gap last year in Ferrari's favour to a massive deficit of 1.4% for McLaren. While a small proportion of that is down to the engine, with a Ferrari reckoned to have an advantage of one or two tenths over an average lap compared to Mercedes, most of it is in car characteristics. Ferrari has done a better job of producing a competitive car under the new regulations, while McLaren has simply failed to do so. McLaren's season has not been straightforward. It made a promising start in the first pre-season test in Barcelona, where it had the third fastest car on outright lap time and wasn't suffering from the porpoising problems that held others back but front brake overheating problems ruined McLaren's running in the second pre-season test in Bahrain. As technical director James Key put it, this made certain brake parts crispy owing to high temperatures. This limited McLaren's running. With Ricardo sidelined thanks to COVID-19, Lando Norris did all the driving, but on days one and two, his longest stint of representative laps was four. This increased to 10 on the final day of running thanks to new parts flown in, which included a new titanium brake disc cover, but McLaren ended that test without a race distance and behind its rivals in terms of setup understanding. The brakes were upgraded again in Bahrain, allowing McLaren at least to complete the race, with a definitive fix including a carbon fibre brake cover and modified brake ducts introduced as part of its major Spanish Grand Prix upgrade package that meant the front brakes were now running at lower temperatures. What Key describes as an oddball problem baffled the team for some time. The problem was that a pressure imbalance meant the cooling airflow wasn't getting fed to the discs and calipers. At times, the flow was even reversed, drawing hot air into the brakes. The brake cooling system contributed to McLaren's slow start on the Bahrain Grand Prix weekend. There, it had only the eighth fastest car. But encouragingly, McLaren did leap forward after its poor start, with Norris taking seventh in Saudi Arabia, then leading home Ricardo as the team took fifth and sixth in Australia. Initially, the drivers suspected McLaren's slow corner weaknesses had carried over from last year. But as time has gone on, the car has proved to be more of an all-rounder than its predecessors. The last generation of McLaren struggled in slower, longer corners, but this year's car is more consistent, even though Norris isn't completely convinced that old weaknesses have been eliminated, with weak tracks from last year, such as Zandvoort with its longer corners, yet to come. He does suggest that rather than tackling specific limitations, it's now primarily a question of improving the car all-round. 
Most importantly, McLaren has eliminated its slow corner weakness, as Key called it a roadblock that limited its previous generation of cars. While the inherent characteristics of cars built to the new 2022 rules means cars struggle for front end into slower corners, this is a generic problem caused by the lack of front load at low speed rather than McLaren specific. McLaren made changes early in the season, including working on the inner brake fairings at the rear that are crucial to making the diffuser work as well as possible. But McLaren's key upgrade was in Spain. There, it introduced a modified front and rear wing, along with the aforementioned front brake tweaks. There were also modifications to the front suspension fairings and a modified floor with new fences on the front and changes to the floor edges. This package worked well, but McLaren is still mired in the midfield and has slipped behind Alpine to fifth in terms of average performance. But with Mercedes well ahead and Red Bull and Ferrari out of reach, fourth is now its stated objective for the season. There are no more major upgrades planned, a situation not helped by the fact McLaren is one of a number of teams on target to bust the cost cap thanks to the impact of sky-high inflation and other rising costs. With the recent races in Azerbaijan and Montreal laying bare another McLaren weakness, a car that's carrying too much drag, despite a tweak to the rear wing to make it more efficient, McLaren could face a tough challenge even to hold on to fourth place. Progress is a race that has no end. After every finish line, another challenge awaits. How can we continue to push innovation in a sport at the forefront of technology? This is how. Discover how Aramco and the Aston Martin Formula One team aim to meet Formula One's sustainable fuel targets. Aramco, powered by how. So it's clear that Ferrari has left McLaren behind, but while these were both upwardly mobile midfield teams last year, their situations were not direct comparable. Although Ferrari hasn't won a championship since taking the Constructors' crown back in 2008, it has been a regular race winner. McLaren, by contrast, went through a near nine-year victory drought before Ricardo's Monza win. The crucial difference is that Ferrari is more advanced in terms of its recovery. What's more, while it hasn't won a title for as long as McLaren, its performance dip was a temporary one, triggered by the engine regulation changes it collaborated with the FIA on creating in 2020. But McLaren is emerging from a far deeper, longer malaise. While it blamed the struggles of the Honda era from 2015 to 2017 on its engine partner, the switch to Renault in 2018 laid bare its significant weaknesses on the chassis side. Since its glory days, McLaren had slipped back and not kept pace with the way teams like Red Bull and Mercedes pushed F1 to new heights. This triggered personnel changes and investment, including the recruitment of Andreas Seidel and James Key. A priority for Seidel were key strategic moves, such as the change to Mercedes engines in 2021, as well as committing to a new state-of-the-art wind tunnel. While McLaren has its own wind tunnel on site, it has been using Toyota Motorsport's wind tunnel facilities in Cologne for a long time, as its own tunnel has fallen behind. Given the length of time it takes to build, it won't be until 2023, and therefore for the 2024 car, that it gets the full benefit of this. It's also invested heavily in a new state-of-the-art driver and loop simulator program that will pay off on a similar timescale. Ferrari, by contrast, has its new simulator fully up and running for this year. Meanwhile, improvements have been made to McLaren's manufacturing resources and other facilities upgrades, although this remains an ongoing process. This means McLaren is a team that's still growing and is therefore behind Ferrari in terms of its readiness to be at the front. So not keeping pace with Ferrari in 2022 is not in itself a disaster. But what is more concerning is the size of the deficit and the fact McLaren is now in a close fight with teams such as Alpine, Alfa Romeo, Haas, Aston Martin and Alfa Tauri in F1's midfield. Since McLaren's trajectory turned upwards in 2019 after major changes were made, this is the first time it has stumbled. From here, it must consolidate its hold on fourth place and ensure that, next year, it makes a big step forward to prove it will be ready to benefit from the infrastructure improvements it's making come the 2024 season. That's when it must be up there with Ferrari and fighting for wins, and even the World Championship. Anything else will be a failure. Thanks for watching F1 2022 Technical Analysis, brought to you by Aramco.